bring us a the exact same deck. <laughs> Boswell like a rock deck. <laughs> this is what I was saying about the first couple of rounds. We don't quite know what people are playing, so we end up sitting down and going, ah, Boswell like a rock mirror match. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Are they playing? Literally the exact 60 cards. It's close. They're Not very, quite, very <laughs> close. <laughs> but uh, yeah, two of the top players here from the U.S., Rahul Reddy and Jimmy Pendarvis, both had quite a bit of success at regional championships recently. And uh, these two players, I'm sure, have faced off plenty of times in recent tournaments. They have flown all the way to Australia to play once again. And that is actually the thing we maybe haven't stressed quite enough so far. This is not like a little tournament just down the road. This is a, a really quite... What's the word? Intensive traveling to get here. I mean, my journey here took something like 32 hours from my house to the hotel. Yep. And a lot of players have had similarly kind of grueling journeys. When you're coming this far, you are bringing your best deck. You are bringing a deck you feel really confident with. And it means that when players sit down, there's that extra level of pressure that, you know, players inevitably put on themselves, which is, I've traveled so far to get here. I really want to try my very hardest to make it worth all the effort I took to get here. Because I think one thing really far away. <laughs> yes. Uh, that is, putting it lightly, uh, you said, what, 35 hours for you? It's about 24 hours of traveling for me. So, so lucky. Uh, yeah, most most people that traveled here <laughs> had uh, quite a bit of a journey. And, of course, there's quite a bit of a time difference as well. So there is the physical aspect of just being completely exhausted before you even played any games. It's always interesting to see how that affects players. But, you know, most of these... no sleep so uh you got to think at this point people are kind of used to it but there's a there's something a little different about jet lag compared to just not getting any sleep the night before yes i mean it, it really is that extra level of challenge and it's what i love about these international championships it's like right let's get all the best players in the world let's all go down to australia and let's really see who can handle you know the deck choice the playing the jet lag all of these different factors going in together and it really does give us you know these elite players because it really is those players like Rule, like Jimmy Pendarvis, who really do believe they can be the best, they can win these big tournaments, that go to the effort of making the journey on down here. So I suppose one question we need to ask is, how do you approach a Boswell Lycanroc mirror match? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you power up your Boswell when you attack, I guess. That's, uh, that's typically what you tend to do with this deck. There's not a whole lot of different strategies. We do see a fairly important prize card there in the Suda Widow. Uh, that is one way to kind of swing this matchup when Boswell GX uses one of those big attacks. You can then copy it with Suda Widow and uh, take quite a swing here. But we are started here with Rahul double Boswell GX against a Regirock EX and a Boswell GX from Jimmy. Not a bad start. And of course, we're not going to see much Bridget this game. And by much Bridget, I mean any Bridget. <laughs> because you've got that really great Brooklet Hill Stadium, which allows you to search for a basic water or fighting Pokemon and put it straight onto your bench. We do see that these fighting decks, these Boswell decks, tend to actually just go for the very standard Brooklet Hill and then N and Sycamore. Now, we do see a Max Elixir coming down from Raul, getting him an energy on the Boswell on the bench. He's got a strong energy for the Boswell in the active, and then he plays an N straight away. Not a bad start. Yeah, and he actually did mulligan a couple times, so he's favoring the N over anything like Professor Sycamore uh, to shuffle jimmy's hand back in because he had two or three extra cards off of the mulligan so uh, that automatically influenced his play otherwise we probably would have seen professor sycamore yeah i think that's a good shout there we do get the remoraid as well ready for the octillery next turn we got that sudo woodoo you mentioned that raul has on the bench but jimmy doesn't actually have access to at the moment so it's actually it's a good setup for raul of course when you're playing boswell decks it's one of the few decks where you really don't mind going second mm -hmm. because that jet punch it's single energy basic pokemon so as long as jimmy can get that boswell into the active he can be signed through that jet punch doing 30 to the active 30 to one of his bench pokemon straight away here so i always find if i'm playing an evolution deck i almost always go second but when i play boswell i'm like right i don't mind going second i win the flip <laughs> every single game yeah, and that is very important in a, a very long tournament where, you know, you're not going to get to go first every round. So 
having a deck where it's okay to go second is actually a pretty big advantage. I think this and probably Volcanion are probably the two decks that don't mind going second. Everything else wants to evolve and then wants to go first, but a turn, turn one, one Lily! Lily. Eight <laughs> cards! <laughs> That's oh, incredible. That's wonderful. Lily is another one of these cards that has really benefited from Tapu Lele's Wonder Tag, being able to search it out. You draw until you've got six cards in your hand, eight if it's your first turn of the game, and Jimmy actually emptied his hand out completely. That was better than a Professor Sycamore. <laughs> then we see the Flowstone on the Red Jurok, and we're now going to see Jet Punch doing 60 to the active Boswell and 30 to the benched Remoraid. If Raul doesn't evolve that Remoraid this turn, it is going to be knocked out next turn. Yeah, actually, an extra 10 thanks to Reggie Rocky X. So oh, of course. 70 damage Jet Punch. Now we see Rahul attaching another energy to his active Buzzwool GX. And I think this is because he actually plays two energy switch. So he could energy switch the basic energy from the bench Buzzwool, move it up to his active, and then use one of those big attacks and get a knockout if he's able to draw it. He isn't, and actually, so he's left that Remoraid on the bench, and Jimmy's going to be loving this. Jimmy, now with a jet punch, is actually going to take a cheeky prize on that Remoraid, although he's now in the same position where he needs to evolve his Remoraid, or the same thing's going to happen on Raul's turn, and I suppose this is why they call it a mirror match. <laughs> I believe so. And, yeah, right now it seems like Jimmy is in the lead, but this is kind of a summary of what you're going to see in this matchup. Quick hard-hitting attacks, and looks like Jimmy's actually going to oh, go for the double knockout this turn. I love this. And there's, that is one way to get a two-prize knockout. Typically, it's by knocking out a Pokemon GX, but with Jet Punch, that bench damage allows you to pick up multiple knockouts with a single attack. We, he will need to use the undamaged Buzzwell, because then, of course, he's got the strong energy, puts it up to 50, the Red Jurok up to 60, Rock Ruff goes down, Remoraid goes down, Jimmy goes up by two prizes, and he's got the Octillery on the bench and an undamaged Buzzwell in the active. And I love Jimmy's play here. That was a really key turn. And it's not just that he took two prizes, but now Raul's got no Rock Ruff on the bench, and he's just benched a Remoraid, so it's stopping his process as well as taking those prizes which was so good from Jimmy's turn there. It looks like he's debating if he wants to put down Brooklet Hill, and he does, uh, so he can search out another basic fighting Pokemon or water Pokemon, but Remoraid is already down. Um, <laughs> yep. Yeah, Rahul is certainly behind here. The only advantage he has is he has more energy in play. Jimmy has yet to play any Max Elixir and get extra energy into play, so if there's one way for him to come back, it's, you know, Getting a knockout here with Absorption GX, and then if Jimmy can't respond with a knockout, he can then knuckle impact for another knockout and kind of overpower Jimmy with these big attacks that, you know, Jimmy just doesn't have enough energy for. And that really is Boswell in a nutshell. You've either got the Jet Punch or you've got the free energy huge knockouts. There is nothing in between with these Boswell decks. Raul with his Max Elixir and Energy Switch, which it must be mentioned Jimmy is playing as well. He's able to get that free energy Boswell first. So he's already got the KO with Absorption. And then it really does put Jimmy on a clock. Because if he doesn't get the KO, then you've got, you know, that second attack as well there. And... You know, Roll could be taking four prizes with this Buzzwall, potentially. And there is the absorption, which has got to happen, of course, because the other attack says you can't attack next turn, and that's not much fun. Yeah, he was also 10 short. He doesn't have a choice pain or anything, just one strong energy. So oh, of course, he's only yes. hitting for 180, so he was forced to use the GX attack. I don't think he really minds, but oh my goodness, we see a Mewtwo out of Jimmy's deck. Uh, that is not something we see... In decks that don't play double colorless energy, but looks like Jimmy, he is prepared for this weekend. Uh, I know a lot of the players from the U.S. were playing this Buzzwool deck, so Jimmy may be metagaming his own uh, fellow people from the U.S. <laughs> with this Mewtwo. And if he can get two energy on that Mewtwo, he's got a KO. Now, although he doesn't play double colorless, he does play both Max Elixir and Energy Switch. And I don't believe we've seen any of any of those cards. So an Energy plus an Energy Switch or an Energy plus a Max Elixir or a Max Elixir plus an Energy Switch. He's certainly got a bunch of options. That Red Jurok's got a Floatstone attack, so that can get out the active nice and easy. So if I'm Jimmy here, I'm feeling kind of confident about my, my chances here. And then, of course, 130 is a really awkward HP to try and hit. And this, this could be how Jimmy really jumps ahead in the game. But, of course, as much as I'm saying I like his chances of getting the energy, this is all a moot point unless he gets the energy. 
Yeah, you do see that Mewtwo up on the screen. Uh, if you're an old school player, you might recognize that artwork from <laughs> base set brought back to life in the XY Evolutions expansion. It's beautiful. <laughs> it really is. Uh, but yeah, it's we don't see a lot of cards from that XY Evolutions expansion in competitive play, but there are a select few that have crept in to some decks, and Mewtwo has been the biggest one as of late, almost exclusively to counter Buzzwell GX. That Psychic Attack can hit for weakness, and then if there's three energy on it, uh, you can just throw on a Choice Band and get the knockout with Psychic, and it has become quite a powerful tech card against these Buzzwall decks. Yeah, as a man who loves Buzzwall, Mewtwo has been the bane of my testing lately. There's been so <laughs> many games where I'm like, I am doing so well, I've got free energy on a Buzzwall, this is going all my way, and then just Mewtwo double colorless energy, and I'm like, come on. <laughs> but that's what happens. You find these Pokemon, and especially colorless energy attackers that can be put into any deck, especially basic colorless attackers that can be put into any deck, and then it gives you a nice Buzzwall counter. And the general rule is, if a card like Buzzwall gets really big there will be a card out there that we can find as players that we can then use to keep it in check we see Gallade and Sudowoodoo with counter energy that are really good against Zoroark and we see Mewtwo that's really good against Boswell but after all of this oh, oh there's the energy switch uh -oh. that's number one and he's got the second energy in hand Mewtwo is gonna take down this Boswell <laughs> Mewtwo out of nowhere with the energy switch and psychic for the knockout, so now Jimmy is down to two prize cards. Now the unfortunate thing about Mewtwo is it's not a very proactive card. Uh, it is very good against Buzzwell that has energy on it, but otherwise it's somewhat weak. Um, psychic only does 20 damage. Like for example, it's going to take five turns to knock out an Octillery, which is sad. <laughs> uh, so it's very dependent on what your opponent does. Um, uh, and, and all of his energy is on this Mewtwo now. So if Rahul can find a way to deal with it, maybe get a Max Elixir this turn and knock out the Mewtwo, Jimmy is kind of reset back at zero energy, and that's not a place you want to be in when you're using this Buzzball deck. It's not. We did see an evolution into Lycanroc there, but it seems like Rahul did not want to use that Bloodthirsty Eyes ability. Happy just to leave Jimmy's bench as it is, not drag a Pokemon active. And I believe he's playing an end here. Now, of yep. course, that Octillery with Abyssal Hand does mean that the end is not quite as punishing as it could be, but it still gives Jimmy fewer options than he had beforehand. So, Raul here, like you say, if he can get a Max Elixir, KO that Mewtwo, combined with the Enter 2, having his own Octillery, this game is not over by any stretch of the imagination. Oh, Max Ooh. Elixir, uh, this is his fourth one. And, and he missed it. He, he missed three out of his four this game. That Ooh. is brutal. But uh, that is... Kind of what happens when you play this Buzzwell deck. It is all about those max elixirs and getting them at the right time. Uh, you only get to attach one energy per turn, and it takes three energy to use the big attack. So when you miss, it really hurts. It really does. Now, we do see that Jet Punch there putting the Octillery up to 60. That's quite big, because it means there's now one Jet Punch will, with the residual damage, get the KO on that Octillery, which is important, of course, because that Mewtwo only gives up one prize. So this is a way for Raul to kind of take two prizes in one turn, not be forced into an awkward seven-prize game, which is pretty big. Jimmy here, it's just about energy. It's just about getting energy on the field, playing Max Elixir, attaching energy for the turn. He does have an energy on that Lycan Rock, and he didn't have to use Absorption GX, so Dangerous Rogue GX will be doing 250 at the moment. If Jimmy can get a Lycan Rock and an energy next turn, he could well win the game, and honestly, I think Jimmy needs to evolve it this turn, because otherwise Raul has got to be thinking, play a Guzma, drag that Lycanroc into the active, KO that and the Octillery, because as soon as Lycanroc's got, uh, Rockcroft's got one energy on, you're threatening Dangerous Rogue, which at this stage will win the game for Jimmy. Yeah, I think Jimmy's just in firm control of the game. Um, he doesn't even particularly need to evolve Rockcroft. He's going to Psychic here for a lot of damage and make it so that, you know, no matter what happens next turn, Mewtwo can knock out that Buzzwolf for the game. So I don't even know if he's particularly worried uh, about his Rockruff being knocked out. He's just too far ahead on prizes, and Rahul doesn't have any great options to deal with this Mewtwo. You can see why it's such a powerful tech card. It is something that really these Buzzwell decks have no good answer for. 
No, it's so difficult. 130 is a really awkward amount of HP. I mean, you do need to use something like a Knuckle Impact to get rid of it. Even a Claw Slash on a Lycan Rock needs a strong energy just to be able to hit up to 130 rather than 110. It's such an awkward amount of HP to hit. 130 HP, non-GX Pokemon are really awkward. And we do see Raul just conceding here. Same thing you said, Kyle. There's just... There's too many options. Jimmy's got... It's not just a win condition. Jimmy's yep. got two or three win conditions on the board. I cannot stop them all. Yeah, it was checkmate at that point. Um, there was 180 damage on the Buzzwell GX, and Rahul has no way to remove that damage. So there was already a fighting energy on Jimmy's Buzzwell GX. And so at the very least, he could just jet punch next turn and <laughs> hit the Buzzwell wherever it is and yeah. take the final knockout. So uh, Jimmy took a very convincing game one, you know... Going second actually seemed like it was better for him. He got to jet punch early. Rahul missed that artillery on the second turn of the game and lost his Remoraid early on. But really, it was all about the Mewtwo. That was the big swing in the game. That really was. And if we look at the deck list here, we find Rahul not playing that Mewtwo. And I think... I mean, certainly Energy Switch is an unusual card we don't expect to see in these kind of decks. It helps with Max Elixir, it helps to get that free Energy buzz while rolling. But similarly, we see that in Jimmy's deck, it gives you so much extra outs to a Mewtwo. And I was surprised as you are to see that Mewtwo in this Boswell Lycan Rock deck. I expect to see Mewtwo in a lot of decks at the moment. But I expect to see it in decks that are playing double colorless energy. Yeah. Not in a deck that's playing nine fighting and four strong energy. <laughs> but it works. And you're right. That is what won Jimmy that game. And honestly, moving into game two, I'm looking at the deck list. I've just, I, I paid quite a bit of attention to game one there. And I, I just see Jimmy as an almost overwhelming favorite here. And it's all because of Mewtwo. Yeah, it certainly seems like it. I think Rahul might have to take a different strategy in game number two. And, uh, oh, my, that's a lot of fighting energy prized for Jimmy. Uh, <laughs> that's four out of his nine. That's going to make Max Elixir a little difficult to connect <laughs> on. But it uh, looks like Rahul has chosen to go first once again, so still valuing going first versus, you know, getting the first attack off. And I think that's perfectly reasonable. But I, I think he might have to approach the matchup differently. Uh, in game one, he was all about piling a bunch of energy onto his Buzzwold using the big attacks, absorption, and then knuckle impact. Maybe he has to take a slower route and just say, I'm going to put one energy on my Buzzwold and then try to power up Lycanroc GX. Uh, have to play around Mewtwo. Yeah, I agree entirely. One thing we've seen a lot of European players do is actually playing Zygarde EX in these Buzzwold decks yeah. because it has a weakness to grass rather than a weakness to sidekick so that if that Mewtwo does come up, it's not. Mewtwo's really punishing when it's hitting for weakness on a Buzzwold. Don't do that much against a Zygarde. <laughs> so that's an option players have, but Raul doesn't have any Zygarde in his deck. We do see here a two-energy Boswell straight away. Again, he's threatening a big KO, but Jimmy's got to be thinking here, oh, cool, I'll just get my Mewtwo again in a minute. Yeah, great start for him. No uh, Lily for eight this game, but Professor Sycamore sad. is still pretty good. And he <laughs> did not have to play down his top of Lele GX, so he gets some uh, extra bench space in this game. And Jimmy, his start looks very simple. Fighting energy, choice band, but it's really all you need. Get some basic Pokemon down, do a little bit of damage with Jet Punch, and set yourself up for future turns. Yeah, it's an excellent start. And, of course, he's got that Remoraid down that Roll doesn't. And Abyssal Hand is great. And if one player is able to draw until five cards every turn and the other player isn't, then that gives them a huge advantage as the game wears on. As it stands, I don't think we're going to be seeing any of that ridiculous jet punch where you're two-hit KOing a Remoraid while taking the KO on the Lycan Rock. But that didn't actually win Jimmy the game last turn. It, last game, it was lovely, but it really was that Mewtwo and the pressure it put on that that was what swung the game. So Jimmy here, just setting up. He gets that Mewtwo out ready nice and early. He's got a Rock Ruff down. And if I'm Raul here, I really am thinking, can I get an energy in a Guzma? I've already got a floatstone on my Rock Ruff to retreat it. I might actually have to use Absorption or <laughs> Knuckle Impact to take out that Mewtwo, which I'm sure Jimmy is, in a way, almost wanting him to do. Go on then, get rid of my Mewtwo. Go and use loads of resources to KO a single prize Pokemon. Oh, it does look like Jimmy drew an extra card there, though. Yeah, a bit of an error. Played Max Elixir and looked at... 
uh, one too many cards off of that. And uh, unfortunately for him, that card was the fighting energy. <laughs> That's but, a little uh, bit upset. That's almost kind of adding in. So it's not it's not the end of the world here. He, he's dealing with this quite all right, and you know probably going to be a little more careful in the in the next couple of turns. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I was it's about to say, I can't believe he actually hit off of his max elixir with all those fighting energy prized, but it uh, looks like he's one card short. <laughs> now, we do see the second strong energy from Raul, so actually, he's got the free energy on there. He can get the KO with either Knuckle Impact or Absorption, because he does have those two strong energy there. Like we saw last game, I would expect it to be Absorption, just because Knuckle Impact has that extra caveat, you cannot attack next turn, so you've got to get it out the active, and it's awkward. Absorption, then Knuckle Impact, and we see Raul doing exactly what he did last game, so I suppose it comes down to, can Jimmy do exactly what Jimmy <laughs> did last game? Does he have the two energy and the choice band? It's going to be a little harder for him this game with all those basic energy in his prize cards, but yeah, you see the big difference there. Uh, if he had gotten the energy off of Max Elixir, this would have been a very easy attach an energy, use Psychic, knockout Buzzwall, and... Jimmy is pretty far ahead in the game. Without that energy in play, he's going to need to draw that Max Elixir. He's going to need to find uh, energy for the Max Elixir and a basic energy to play. And if he doesn't, well, that Buzzwall is going to go unchecked. And this is a slightly earlier than in the previous game. In the previous game, Jimmy had an energy on the field that he could use energy switch to move over. He'd had a little bit more time to get set up. Raul here... He's just gotten going a little bit faster. He's got that free energy Boswell just kind of a turn earlier than he did in the previous game, which means as much as Mewtwo is a little bit of a problem, Raul might have actually got the Boswell early enough that he's able to avoid it a little bit. And now he's in this situation where he's got the big two prize KO and he might still be able to get the knuckle impact on the Mewtwo to take that off the board. And Jimmy has got to be thinking, well, I don't really want to bench something like a Boswell, because if I do, then Raul might be up by four prizes before I turn around. That's not ideal. Yeah, I think Jimmy... Oh, here oh. comes the Max Elixir. This, this is, is going to be a big six cards he looks at. Does he find the basic energy? And he's making sure he counts out. For and he sure does. This time. Does he have a basic energy in his hand? And, crucially, a way to get the Rock Ruff out the active, because at the moment, that Rock Ruff, it doesn't have free retreat. He's going to need to get it out of the active first. Yeah, he'll need a float stone and uh, basic energy. I think he does have the energy in hand, but it looks like he does not have the float stone, so he's actually going to spread his energy out, and I think this is very smart. Yeah, uh, if Boswell GX uses Knuckle Impact next turn and knocks out one of those threats, Jimmy can use Psychic with Mewtwo or just watch and learn, and either one of those results in a knockout. And if Rahul decides, I'm just going to jet punch and knock out Rockruff, then that leaves the Mewtwo ready to come out and use Psychic. Yeah, I think that's brilliant. I think Jimmy, spreading the energy around, he's got those two threats. I mean, Asunawudu is a great tech in this matchup. That Mewtwo is a great tech in this matchup. Jimmy knows he's going down three prizes. No matter what happens, Rahul's taking a prize this turn. What Jimmy's basically saying is, all right, I'm going to be down by three prizes, but if I'm going to be down by three prizes, I am going to make darn sure that I have got everything I need to retaliate. We do see Bloodthirsty Eyes coming out here, dragging that Mewtwo up into the active, but of course, Sudowoodoo will get the return KO. Although, yes, but Max so Elixir gets a second energy onto the other Buzzwall GX, so he'll be able to do another Knuckle Impact on the following turn, so even though Jimmy has the answers here, Rahul just has so much energy in play that it might not matter. Oh, this turn for all is huge. That Max Elixir combined with getting an, oct an, uh, excuse me, an artillery out, which, of course, Jimmy was going to be looking for an end next turn. I think those two things combined might have just wrapped this up for Raul here. He is in a commanding position, and Jimmy has one energy on the Sudowoodoo. He's got no Boswell in play. He's just... He's not got the setup he had last turn, and he's already played two Max Elixir, and he doesn't have many energy in the, in the deck at this stage. We don't expect him to hit his Max Elixirs this game, and that is going to really hurt when you've got the setup that he's got. Even if, he, like you say, he's going to get the KO with Sudowoodoo here with Watch and Learn, which is great, 
But then Boswell's just going to come up with knuckle impact, get rid of the Sudowoodoo, and then Jimmy's got no energy on the field. He's probably not hitting his max elixirs, and then he can jet punch next turn. I mean, it's not looking great. Yeah, it seems like Jimmy might actually be taking a different route here, sending out Rockruff instead of the Sudowoodoo. He had an energy in hand, but he might be going for something like the energy switch and going for the dangerous rogue GX to knock out this Boswell GX. Uh, it's, he's going to force her hold to have a strong energy and a choice band on the next turn to knock out his Lycanroc GX. So making it as difficult as possible to knock out the, his Pokemon that has the energy on it. And we do see the Lycanroc coming down there. Dangerous Rogue does 50 damage for each one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. That's 150 plus the strong energy is 170 plus the 60 already on Boswell is more than enough to get the KO here. So I think you're right. I like this play a lot. We had the energy switch over to the Rockruff plus the strong energy. The problem is still going to be that Jimmy's just not building up that cache of energy on the field like Raul's been able to do since the beginning of the game. And if Raul hits a strong energy choice band, which is not outside the realms of possibility, he's going down to one prize while taking all of Jimmy's energy off the field. And Jimmy is really walking a fine line in this game. He has got some stuff. He is able to retaliate. But every turn, he's got just enough to have a play. And then he's really leaving it over to Raul and crossing his fingers that Raul doesn't have what he needs. Yeah, sometimes that's all you can do, though. <laughs> when you're this far behind, you got to take some chances. And we do see Dangerous Rogue GX taking the first knockout for Jimmy. I think he'll probably get two fighting energy out of his prizes. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good chance. Uh, but big draw here. Does he find... Well, he's going to go Brooklyn Hill first to take a card out of his deck. But uh, oh, that, that actually makes it so... He does not need a strong energy. Nope. So now any energy means a knuckle impact knockout on this Lycanroc GX. And you got to think it's going to wrap up the game if he can find one. He's got one. There's the energy, of course, that Red Rock doing an extra 10 damage, plus the choice band means Knuckle Impact does 200, KOs the Lycanroc, and this is what I was saying in the previous turn. Jimmy had just enough to get the KO with Lycanroc, but then when Raul responds, Jimmy's got no energy on the field. I mean, if he hits a max elixir and an energy, then he's still got the Sudowoodoo play. But then we'd have to have a strong energy with the Red Rock on the bench or he'd need a choice band. But even then, it's, it's still it's all of his resources just to desperately try and stay in the game while Raul needs to take a prize. <laughs> and he's yeah, already it, got an energy on his Sudowoodoo as well. Yeah. Um, it, it's, you'd look at it and you think... What does adding 10 damage to an attack actually do? Does that make a difference? And uh, the answer most of the time is a resounding yes. Uh, we see Reggie Rock EX's Reggie Power ability taking this from 10 damage short to a clean knockout. And that is why we see this in these Boswell decks. Uh, it's very useful early on, you know, with a strong energy and the Reggie Power to hit for 60 against a lot of these basic Pokemon. But even here, being able to hit for exactly 200 is going to be the difference in this game. I mean, one of my favorite mantras in the Pokemon trading card game is doing extra damage is always good. And it is, and Red Rock proves that. We do see it as almost exclusively a one-off in every Boswell deck, but it's just because 10 damage is what's needed. Pokemon's a game about numbers. You need to be able to hit those key numbers to take those key knockouts, and like we just saw last turn, Red Rock does that. We see Boswell with a strong energy in a Red Rock, hits 60 with Jet Punch, which KOs so many of these basic Pokemon, like Rock Ruff, rolls up a Pokemon, puts the Octillery in the active, free retreat, and that basically is the win here. Yeah, so I think Jimmy's only way to stay in this game is what he's going for here. He attaches to Sudowoodo and the Choice Band, and if he can hit a Max Elixir, he can use Watch and Learn, Copy, Knuckle... A situation where both players have Sudowoodoos ready to go, <laughs> to, and they even it up at one apiece, and I think this is quite fitting for a mirror match. Each player's won one game... And we saw there, Raul played that so much better. He had them, and it worked. That big KO on the Mewtwo, the big KO on the Lycan Rock. He went after the energy. He controlled Jimmy's threats. But again, Jimmy didn't really have Mac. I mean, he did hit one last game, which I think is quite impressive as it goes. Jimmy didn't have Max Elixir. Jimmy went second. Jimmy had a, a poor setup compared to game one. A lot went against Jimmy in that game. And going into game three... Jimmy's going to be able to go first if he wants to. And like we said, there's an argument for going second here. 
but you've got to think he's probably not going to prize for basic energy this game. <laughs> I hope not. That would be pretty bad two games in a row for Jimmy. Uh, we do see two strong energy prized for him this time, but that's almost less of an issue than having all of your basic energy prized. No, you need the energy on the field. A strong energy tends to come in in the later game. In the earlier game, you can use things like Absorption, like Dangerous Rogue, to take those big KOs. Now, we do see a Brooklet Hill coming down from Jimmy here. Allows him to search out that buzz wall. And we don't have quite the same issue we had in game three in round one. We got a 21 and a half <laughs> minutes left here. I don't think we're going to time. We've done two games. Yeah, I think so, especially in this matchup. Uh, lots of hard-hitting attacks back and forth. Uh, first, Max Elixir does connect for Jimmy, so he does get that extra energy into play. And that is, well, it seems like that has been the difference maker in this matchup so far. The player who has been able to get more energy into play has been the one who's been winning most of the time. Yeah, and if one player gets a turn one jet punch, but the other player the next turn gets a turn two absorption, <laughs> that's a little bit of an advantage for that second player. So... We do see here the other side of the first second debate. On the one hand, going second can give you a turn one jet punch, which is great, but going first can give you a turn two knuckle impact. I have seen turn one knuckle impacts, yeah. <laughs> and that is absolutely huge. If you go second to get a turn one knuckle impact, it is ridiculous. It's not something you rely on. <laughs> so Rahul does not look like he has a great start here. Uh, it's going to use the Brooklyn Hill for the Rem Raid. Just attaches the basic fighting energy to his active. He does have Regirock EX on the bench, so could have gone for a strong energy if he has a supporter, but you know, just attaching that basic energy makes me think he might not have one. No, and that's that could be a slight issue here. I mean he's yep. Oh no, that's just it. Now he could potentially get double KO on the Remoraid next turn if there's no evolutions from Jimmy here. So, not the worst play ever. And that's what Boswell does. It gives you a turn or two to buy time. You don't have to have the explosive turns if you can be spreading damage around. But I'm looking at that two energy Boswell on Jimmy's side of the field. And that makes me worry for Raul here. If Jimmy gets an energy, he's probably taking two prizes. As long as he can get something like a float stone to get out the active as well. Yeah, he still needs multiple cards. But he'll have the draw power from Octillery. He'll have... I think it's Professor Sycamore in his hand as well. And again, Rahul did not play a supporter on his first turn. Uh, all he did was play energy and use Jimmy's Brooklyn Hill and then play it on a choice band. So unless he has Octillery in hand or he draws something great, he's going to be in a pretty bad position as uh, that fully powered Buzzwell GX is ready to go. And you've got to think here, Jimmy is not going to play an N. We've seen N already this morning, you know, really taking advantage of players having a good start, using Magical Ribbon and all things like that. This is a complete opposite situation. And now we do see the Guzma coming down. He's not able to take the energy off the ball, but he can get the Boswell with the Choice Band. And presumably we're going to see an Absorption GX here. And this really puts Raul on the back foot. Maybe with a Max Elixir and an Energy, if he puts a Regirock active and and hits a flow stone. But again, we're back in that situation where we're saying if this and this and this. And that is not where you want to be on your second turn of the game when you probably don't even have a supporter. And double Octillery for Jimmy on his second turn. So he's going to be using Abyssal Hand multiple times every turn. And we even see the Mewtwo come down. And this is a very similar position from where Rahul was versus Jimmy in the first two games. The difference is... Rahul doesn't have Mewtwo to respond to this kind of a play. Uh, Jimmy has been able to just go, you know, max elixir or energy switch on a Mewtwo and then psychic and knock out a big Buzzwool GX. But Rahul does not have that option, that quick two energy option. Uh, he could get Pseudo Widow and do that, but it's just not the same as having that 130 HP Mewtwo threatening to attack in consecutive turns. It really isn't, and Rahul is on the back foot here. Free energy Boswell is scary, but it's fine if you've Ugh. got a Mewtwo. And he but doesn't have a supporter again. Oh, and that really could be pretty much it. You know Jimmy, or the, yeah, Jimmy's got the uh, choice band, so he's hitting 190 with Knuckle Impact. So you know Jimmy's got the KO this turn. He's going down to two prizes, and an end doesn't hurt because he's not just got one Octillery, he's got two Octillery on the field. End to two is going to do basically nothing. And if Raul ever does get a free energy Boswell to retaliate, that's all right. 
Jimmy's got Mewtwo. All he needs to do is make sure he gets some energy on the field, because he doesn't want to lose all his energy. As long as he can keep energy on the field, keep ticking along with energy attachments, I don't really see... And we're only on his third turn of the game. I just don't really see how Jimmy loses unless he runs out of energy. So for him, it is keep drawing cards, keep playing Max Elixir, keep getting your attachment for the turn, give yourself options, have that Sudowoodoo ready, have that Mewtwo ready, and then he can basically guarantee the game. <laughs> and after ah. that, Max Elixir rule says, <laughs> yep, I can't win. If and you draw concedes. one more energy, then I'm going to definitely lose this game. Yeah, and I agree. I don't think there's any way for Hul to come back in this game and... Jimmy Pendarvis takes a pretty convincing series here in round two. He'll advance to 2-0 and at the Oceania International Championships. And uh, it's amazing what a difference one card can make in a matchup. And uh, we saw Mewtwo making all the difference there. Yeah, it was absolutely huge. The thing is, like, the, I mean, the Buzzwell Lycan Rock Mirror often comes down to Max Elixir. Who can hit the most Max Elixir? Who can get the best setup? What Jimmy's done is kind of say, well, it's kind of like that. But also, did, did I mention I've got a Mewtwo? <laughs> so even if you get the free energy Buzzwall early, I can actually counter that using Mewtwo. And then if I get the Buzzwall early, I'm going to win. And even if I don't, I might be able to play the Mewtwo and still win, and I love Jimmy's deck. <laughs> and I know it's not quite this super secret rogue deck nobody saw coming, but this is still a deck list I was not expecting to see. It's an unusual tech in a usual deck, and I do think here that, I mean, certainly one of the decks I've seen this morning already, which really strikes me as one that could have a pretty deep run. Absolutely. Uh, but... Surprise, we have some bonus action for you Yay. in round two. We can actually switch over to our other match we have in the feature area, which will feature two-time international champion Torrid Reklev, who has started the tournament 1-0. So we're going to switch over there and jump into that series so we can get some more round two action and uh, see what Torrid brought to the table for this tournament. Well, it looks like Tord brought the same deck as Jesper brought. It is this Gardevoir Zoroark deck. 